Amar Al Hamdani, she's a Yemeni analyst and visiting fellow at Georgetown University and joins us via Skype from Washington, D.C. Um, some other Trump administration and the Saudis both now say they've stopped the refueling of Saudi warplanes operating over Yemen. So what impact is this going to have on the ground and what's prompted this U.S. action, do you think? What prompted this U.S. action is probably a preemptive step to what's about to happen in Congress. Uh, we just had elections here in Washington, D.C., and it seems that a lot of the senators and congressmen and women who won want to see an end for the war in Yemen. And what we're seeing here is, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, the U.S. removing itself from the situation of what's happening in Yemen. Of course, it's not going to slow down or end the war in Yemen. It might slow it down just a bit, but you know, all the capacity and everything that's being run right now is Saudi managed. I think it's a clear message that the U.S. no longer wants to be uh, publicly supporting this war. They've said that they would like to see the war end and for peace talks to begin. OK, so, I mean, both sides in the war say they're making gains. But what is the military situation on the ground around Hodeida? And is any one side likely to have a clear victory around this crucial seaport? So it's really hard to tell, but it seems that the most recent up-to-date news are revealing that the government and the pro-Hadi forces that are fighting against the Houthis are having victory. But this is not the first time that this has happened. In the past, we've seen fighting just as fierce in Hodeida, where the government managed to capture a lot of territory and then lose it somehow afterwards. And so just because they're winning now, it doesn't mean that they will... Uh, continue to win the entire war militarily. Now, this is, of course, uh, the hopes of both sides that are fighting this conflict. They both would like to see a clear victory. But what that means is that Yemenis will continue to suffer. There will continue to be bloodshed. And that, you know, this is just an escalation of what's happening there. Yeah, uh, it, it's an interesting point you make, Samar, because aid agencies have long since warned that the fighting in Hodeida has increased the risk of escalating this disastrous uh, humanitarian crisis. So are things likely to get worse with this new offensive which the Saudis have launched? So we have statistics that say that even if the war stops today, the humanitarian crisis is going to continue to get worse because we have not acted in time to save it entirely. And so it is without a doubt that Yemen, sooner or later, we're going to announce famine if the escalation of the fighting continues and if aid is not allowed into the country. And so the humanitarian situation is really alarming. I think the entire world at this point, after three years of war, know that Yemen is in danger, that people are suffering. And I think that the genuine pieces for, uh, for peace are continued to be ignored. For example, women, children, uh, the average person no longer gets to talk about peace. And what we hear are political people advancing okay. their agendas forward and talking about the end of the war, uh, which is not... Sama, just a, just a final thought from you. I mean, international powers, including the US and the UK, have all called for a speedy end to the war. We know that. So where does this now leave the peace talks, which now won't resume, apparently, until the end of the year? Yes, yeah, so that's expected. Peace talks are going to take a while to start. It's going to need a lot of coordination and organization. Every time we've announced the start of peace talks in Yemen, what we saw is an escalation of violence because each party is trying to come into the negotiation from a powerful side in order to push the other side into conceding to their demands. But unfortunately, what we've seen in the past, that this aggression usually tends to push one side or the other out of the negotiation and out of uh, coming to the peace table. And so it's really important here for both sides to kind of slow down their rhetoric and ease it out if they have a true commitment to peace. And I think it ultimately reveals that both sides are really concerned with the military victory and inside of them, inside their military party uh, and inside of their organization, they're not genuinely looking to end the war in Yemen for the right reasons, which is to stop human suffering. Samar Alhamdani, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you. All right, plenty more still to come here on the news hour, including at least 21 people are killed in gun and car bomb attacks in the Somali capital, Mogadishu.